All right, so I'm going to do a walkthrough of chloroplast electron transport, which is essentially what is happening in our light reactions. So I'm going to use this picture to do so. But before I do that, I want to just kind of go through and talk about a little bit about how light is harvested. Okay, and then I'll have a, a little video that'll interject that's uh, a separate video that someone else created that I will sort of narrate over to sort of refresh your memory with what's happening here. So a um, couple of things here looking at these uh, um, uh, images here. So when we think about all of the different molecules that are available to plants to harvest light energy, we can see that there is a wide range of molecules that cover the visible spectrum that are able to harvest that light energy. The two that we're going to focus on here are chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. Okay, so those are going to be two important uh, green chlorophylls that we sort of see in our uh, chloroplasts. But you can see there's lots of other pigments here. These are what we call accessory pigments. These are going to be important ones that are found sometimes in photosynthetic bacteria, or um, we've got some carotenoid pigments, things like that. All other things that just help uh, expand the repertoire of wavelengths, if you will, of possible light energies that plants can utilize for photosynthesis, okay? So this little picture is important because it's highlighting that each one of these circles represents um, sort of a, uh, a pigment of, of chlorophyll that's available to harvest light energy. Now what happens is the majority of, of pigments that are available are just what we call um, antenna pigments. They're basically just harvesting light energy, but we're actually not doing photosynthesis electron transport right there at that center. Okay, so let me flip over maybe to this picture first and highlight that these antenna pigment molecules, what's going to happen is they're going to be bombarded with a wavelength uh, of light with a photon. Okay, and because the energy of that photon being of a certain wavelength matches this energy gap, they're going to be able to excite their electrons in that chlorophyll up to a high energy state, an excited state. Now, they are not a photosynthetic reaction center. So what they can do is they can transfer that energy to somebody who's next door. We call that exciton transfer. So when we watch our little video here, we're going to see it as a, hey, there's a little bit of a jiggling as those uh, chlorophyll molecules become excited, those electrons become excited, but then you'll see the one adjacent to it become excited because it's just passing that excited energy onto its next antenna pigment. This is going to continue to happen until you get to an antenna pigment that is next to a photosynthetic reaction center. And when that happens and when that chlorophyll is excited, you'll notice that it's a little bit lower in energy. That energetic dip is what sort of allows us to stop that exciton transfer process from going any further. We sort of fall into this energetic well at a reaction center chlorophyll. And when that happens, then when that electron is excited in that chlorophyll, it is ejected onto the electron transport chain and then ultimately replaced by water. So we're going to see that in a video that we're going to watch, but that's sort of what's highlighted just with these different um, spheres here is representing these dark green ones represent the photosynthetic reaction centers. So let's go ahead and we can label those. These guys represent the photosynthetic reaction center. So photosynthetic reaction center. So that's where that um, uh, electron is actually lost from and go goes on to the electron transport chain. But the rest of these light green ones, these again are just these antenna pigments. And their job is simply just to harvest that light energy. Okay, so we're going to pause for a second. We're going to go on to a little video that will sort of show you that process. And then we're going to come back and do a walkthrough of what happens with the electron transport that happens in chloroplasts. So we're going to be looking again at this uh, video, walking through the details of how these complexes all work, how we translocate protons, and so forth. So video here that's on Blackboard, I encourage you to watch it in its entirety. I'm just going to sort of uh, fast forward through different parts of it here and then um, highlight certain things. Um, so it's just kind of introducing the different components that we have here. So pausing here, we're going to see that there's two photosynthetic reaction centers. 
okay? We're gonna see the mobile carriers, so we're gonna see um, Q, this is cytochrome B6F, here's plastocyanin, here's ferrodoxin, and here's FNR, and then here's the ATP synthesis machinery. So we're gonna see all of those pieces here. So they're just introducing those pieces. Uh, we've got chlorophyll molecules. So again, these are uh, the molecules that are gonna absorb energy. Um, we've got protons, we've got water, NADPH and so forth. So I think what I might do is start playing and I'll just narrate sort of myself so we can see these different complexes um, that we have here. And so what we're gonna see first, there's all of these chlorophylls that are here. Most of them are just harvesting light. They're not really doing um, uh, any, any, anything that ejects their electrons into the electron transport chain. Okay, but here, there's a photon that's coming in. Okay, do you see that jiggling? That is a um, antenna pigment that's right here. Here's the photosynthetic reaction center that's here. So these are all antenna pigments that are here. So what we're gonna see is we're gonna see photons sort of hit there. We're gonna get these guys to jiggle, they become excited. And then what's gonna happen is it's going to, we're gonna see an adjacent one jiggle. And that, that's that exciton transfer that passes that energy on. Okay, so again, that's being just passed down by exciton transfer. And we're eventually going to get to, there's a photosynthetic reaction center, okay? So now that one finally got its um, energy from uh, that exciton transfer. And in a second we're here, we're gonna see that it's going to eject its electron. And as it ejects its electron, it's going to become a cation. And what's gonna to need to happen is it will need to have its electron replaced. And so then we're gonna migrate down and we're gonna see the oxygen evolving center and what we're gonna see is we're gonna see water get split and those electrons then get used to regenerate um, this back into its neutral state by delivery of electrons. So we'll just kind of play this here. Okay, there's that electron that got lost. That electron, again, is going through the electron transport chain and ultimately it's being delivered to Q, okay? And we're gonna talk about when Q picks up those electrons, okay, there's, Plastoquinone, which is the, the Q, the, the chloroplast version of Q. Okay, we're gonna be making what's called QH2. You saw it grabbed two protons there. It's actually grabbing them from the stroma, which means it's gonna help contribute to the proton gradient by, by grabbing those protons from there. Okay, and so those uh, go on to the electron transport chain. But now we've got cationic chloroplasts um, or a chlorophyll here. And so what's gonna happen is we are going to have, here's water that's coming in. And so we're gonna have water get split and it's going to uh, give up its proton. So this is another way we contribute to the proton gradient because see where these protons, these are protons are gonna be delivered into that inner membrane compartment. Okay, so that's gonna be contributing to the proton gradient there. And then we're gonna have to have two water molecules sort of participate in this because we need to have um, um, uh, enough electrons to kind of go on. So we're gonna see that here. So there's a water molecule. We're gonna to need to have two oxygens there. Okay, so there's those electrons that are being re-delivered to that chlorophyll, so it is no longer a cation. And then we need, again, two water molecules because we need to have here we're gonna have um, molecular oxygen here. Now we're not gonna get into the details. It's a pretty neat biochemistry with what happens in the oxygen evolving center, but you actually need to simultaneously have eight water molecules that are there, but we're not studying the details of that, okay? So again, what's gonna happen, and this will be a good sort of preview as we go to walk through our, uh, our structures here. Here's, uh, here's QH2, it's kinda of coming over to cytochrome B6F. Remember, this is where the Q cycle is gonna happen. So remember, it picked up these two protons from the stroma. So as it delivers its electrons to cytochrome B6F here, which is equivalent to complex three in mitochondria, it's gonna take these two protons and deliver them to the inner membrane compartment. In effect, translocating protons. But because we have the ability to participate in the Q cycle again, we're gonna be able to have these um, uh, electrons kind of ride the ride again and help contribute to the proton gradient. So let's kind of watch that here. So again, cytochrome B6F is equivalent to complex three. We're gonna have those electrons, see those protons go off into, they call it the lumen space, that's the intermembrane compartment. 
Here again is um, uh, those um, uh, electrons being delivered to plastocyanin. That's the equivalent of cytochrome C. And now they're coming over to the pho next photosystem, photosystem one. So we're going to see the same thing. We've got photons here that are exciting antenna pigments, and ultimately they're going to get to the point where they are going to um, excite that, uh, that electron. I'm going to pause here for a second because a lot has happened here. Those electrons kind of went through here. They ended up going to ferrodoxin. We're going to revisit ferrodoxin in a minute because ferrodoxin, as we're going to learn about, has three options for where it can take its electrons. Right now we're looking at what's called non-cyclic electron transport. We're going to deliver these electrons to something called FNR. That's a complex that's ultimately going to deliver those electrons to NADP+. And delivering those electrons to NADP plus is going to generate NADPH, okay? And then in a later video here, we'll talk about other options for where we can deliver electrons. So there's those electrons in FNR. We've got a couple of them that are there. So here's NADP plus coming in to grab its electrons. Don't know if you noticed, but it also, to make NADPH, that H was grabbed in a place where it's important to grab it. It grabbed it from the stroma, so it can help contribute to the protein gradient in that way. So we've generated NADPH, okay? Three main products of the light reactions. Molecular oxygen, we got that from splitting water. We uh, just made NADPH, and then the third product is ATP. So now what we're going to see in a direct homolog of what we saw with mitochondrial electron transport. So we're actually going to see this ATP synthesis machine use that proton gradient to synthesize ATP. So here we can see that. We've got our lollipop head. Okay, we've got our merry-go-round that we have here. Again, same mechanism. Protons are going to sort of come in here. They're going to, through a push and pull mechanism with proton um, donation and abstraction, sort of move this uh, merry-go-round. That's going to cause sort of the loose, tight, open, and conformations there in our ATP synthesis machine to generate ATP. All right, so that was watching it in kind of an animated sense. Let's go and let's look at our static picture and see that same information played out. All right, so returning now to our sort of static picture to see if we can map on everything that we sort of saw there in our video. Let's highlight and remember here, get back to some normal colors here. Let's remember what the products are. So again, this is the light reactions. So light reaction. So our products, okay? We've got molecular oxygen, ATP, and NADPH, okay? So first, the oxygen one is pretty easy. We're gonna do a walkthrough in a second, but I wanna make sure to highlight where all of these pieces are, okay? So our products, we're gonna kinda of highlight in, in blue here. So oxygen, we can see over here, when we start this process and the oxygen evolving center is going to split water and we're gonna take the protons and have them contribute to the proton gradient and then we generate molecular oxygen. So we're gonna see that there, okay? ATP, okay, ATP is synthesized by using the proton gradient that's generated from electron transport. That process of photophosphorylation is gonna generate ATP. And then NADPH, okay, when we're finished with electron transport, the final electron acceptor is NADP+, and that's how we generate NADPH, okay? So we're gonna do a walkthrough here, and as we do the walkthrough, I wanna make sure to highlight the places that we are contributing to a proton gradient. But first, just because it could be a little bit disorienting here, um, because when we learned about mitochondrial electron transport, Matrix was on the bottom. Inner membrane space was on top. Mm. This one's the opposite, okay? And terminology is a little bit different here. They call this the thylakoid lumen, which is the equivalent to the inner membrane compartment. And then we've got stroma. See how they're flipped? Now hopefully you understand why when I did that comparative electron transport, I flipped this picture upside down, okay? So we have to remember that this is really the all the way on the inside of our chloroplasts. And just to draw a comparison to stroma is equivalent to matrix, right? An inner membrane compartment is equivalent to inner membrane space. So just sort of orient us with where we're thinking. 
Okay, this is all the way on the inside of the chloroplast. We're going to be pumping protons in this direction, okay, when we're doing electron transport, and then they're going to be going back in that direction when we're doing photophosphorylation. Okay, so let's do our walk through here, understanding sort of what's happening. I'm going to zoom in here to make sure we can see these complexes and information really well. So remember, when we had light come in to photosystem 2, most of the light is going to be hitting pigments that are accessory pigments. So they're just going to be ones that are jiggling, they're holding on to that energy, and via exciton transfer, they're passing it along to an adjacent chlorophyll. Eventually, it's going to get to one of those chlorophylls that is in a photosynthetic reaction center. So that's what we have here. Okay, what happens is our electron comes initially from our photosynthetic reaction center chlorophyll. So it is going to become, and we don't really have this written on here, this initially becomes P680 as a cation, okay, as it ejects its electron. Now we need to replace that electron. The oxygen evolving center is how we're going to do that. So the oxygen evolving center where oxygen is evolved, oxygen is evolved because water is oxidized and those electrons then get returned to this P680 cation, right? Allowing it to regenerate its neutral kind of form. Okay, so all of this relies on wavelengths of light that are again going to excite that electron to its high energy state. So once this electron leaves photosystem 2 and goes on to QH2, it is high energy by virtue of its sunlight kind of excitation. Drawing a parallel with mitochondrial electron transport, when we leave complex 1, we are high energy because those electrons started from NADH. Okay, But we've got these high energy electrons that are going to be delivered to Q. Okay. Q is going to take those electrons and become reduced. As it becomes reduced, it's going to grab protons all the way from the inside, from the stroma. I know this is a little bit backwards because it's on top here, but this is going to contribute to the proton gradient because it's taking those protons away from the stroma. Okay, Q is going to, as QH2, deliver those electrons over to uh, cytochrome B6F. And as it does so, it's going to then deliver its protons into the inner membrane compartment. So the net is we have translocated these protons, okay? So here are places, and I wanna make sure to highlight this, is how we contribute to a proton gradient. Okay, so I'm gonna just highlight this in red here, identify places where we contribute to our proton gradient. Here's the first place. When water is um, oxidized, those protons are delivered to the inner membrane compartment, which contributes to the proton gradient because it's adding protons to that space. Okay. The combination of Q and the Q cycle with cytochrome B6F is how we take and we translocate these protons sort of across. So we're picking up protons from the stroma and we're delivering them to the inner membrane compartment. So that's how Q with cytochrome B6F with the Q cycle is able to contribute to the proton gradient. So following our walk through here, now we're at cytochrome B6F. This is one of the first places we have um, another true homolog. So this is equivalent, and I'm writing this in blue, right, because that's showing our homology to mitochondria. That's equivalent to complex 3, okay? We've got ubiquinone is going to be our homolog here in mitochondria. This is called plastoquinone, okay, ubiquinone. Okay, plasto is sort of this prefix for set of uh, sort of uh, chloroplasts that we have here. Now, after we're done in complex three, we're going to deliver them to plastocyanin, which is homologous to cytochrome C in the sense that it is a mobile uh, mobile carrier. That's a hydrophilic mobile carrier. It's going to take its electrons over to photosystem one. Okay, so photosystem one really has some homology to photosystem two in that we are going to have a second excitation of these um, electrons. Different wavelength of light, 700 nanometers, okay? But as the electrons sort of go through here, no proton translocation. We have no other ways right now as of yet of contributing to the proton gradient. But as the electrons leave photosystem one, they go to a molecule called ferredoxin. 
okay? And it's not shown on this picture, but I wanna make sure to highlight it here. We'll have another video to talk uh, more in more details about it. There are three places where ferrodoxin can take its electrons. So again, these are ferrodoxin electrons, three places that it can take them. The first place is to take them to FNR, which is what's shown here in our non-cyclic electron transport process. So ferrodoxin taking its electrons onto FNR, that's what this guy is, F <laughs> ferrodoxin NADP plus reductase, more appropriately or simply called FNR, okay? This is where we are going to be delivering those electrons to NADP plus and generating NADPH. Look at this here, this is a third place we are grabbing protons, again, from the stroma compartment. Grabbing them from the stroma means we are going to be contributing to the proton gradient because we're removing them from there. So again, not a place where we are um, translocating, but we've got a place here where we're delivering them to the inner membrane compartment. Here we're taking them from the stroma. And then here with the Q cycle, we are actually moving them from the stroma to the inner membrane compartment. Okay, lastly, just sort of finishing this out, that's uh, uh, gonna be how we generate our proton gradient. And then we're gonna have our dissipation of our proton gradient in our um, ATP synthase machine. And that's gonna synthesize ATP the same way that we saw before. We've got our lollipop head, we've got our loose tight open sort of conformations that are gonna allow us to synthesize ATP. Okay, last little piece here to finish up. <clears throat> I said that there's three options where where ferrodoxin can, can take its electrons. Our video that we watched, our diagram here shows a non-cyclic process. It's gonna take those electrons and then deliver them to FNR and ultimately to the final electron acceptor. Here's another place where we can have electrons from ferrodoxin go. And I'm gonna draw this sort of with a red arrow here. Ferrodoxin could say, hey, I'm a mobile carrier, I'm gonna deliver them back to Q. So one option is it could deliver them back to Q. And why is that beneficial? Well, that allows you to go through the ride again and you can do the Q cycle again and you can generate more of a proton gradient, which is going to be what allows us to increase our ATP synthesis because we're generating more of a proton gradient, okay? And then the last piece to sort of highlight here is a place where we could take um, those electrons is to um, um, a, a redox cascade. Okay, we're gonna get to that in another video, but this is how we regulate and control whether or not chemistry is happening here in our uh, chloroplast biochemistry is by using redox cascades to turn on or off certain enzymes in this pathway. Okay, so that is probably a pretty thorough walkthrough of chloroplast electron transport and photophosphorylation, which really wraps up what we see here for the light reactions.